Sea monkeys are the most impressive achievement in the history of marketing. By the end of this video, I will have you convinced of this fact. Growing up, I had my fair share of pets. Cats, dogs, a guinea pig, you know, the normal stuff. But one day, my dad brought home sea monkeys, and right away, I knew they were different. As in, different from what the packaging advertised. Because inside the tank swam these weird, transparent bug things. Yet, the box depicted these pink anthropomorphic creatures that could supposedly play catch, be hypnotized, and rise from the dead. I felt confused and a little ripped off. More than anything though, I just wanted to know what they were, and why they looked so different from the pictures on the box. But as a kid, had no idea, that's the least interesting part about sea monkeys, and that it only gets darker from there. This is the story of a man named Harold Von Braunhut, who had an idea so big, it took over the world. In America, the 1950s marked a period of sustained economic prosperity, which meant two things. Couples now felt safe to start a family, as well as a surge in population. But along with a baby boom came an increased demand for new toys, since there were more kids running around than ever before. By combining what children love most, toys, pets, and magic, Harold captured the hearts and wallets of millions. Harold's idea for sea monkeys came from an unexpected place a bucket. On one fateful trip to the pet store, Harold noticed a bucket filled with water, sitting in the corner by the fish aquariums. But as he got closer, realized the bucket contained much more than just water. He bent down, focused his eyes, and saw thousands of brine shrimp. These tiny little specimens often sold as fish food and not thought of as much else. Harold, however, when he looked into the microscopic eyes of those brine shrimp, saw them differently. He saw possibilities. Instead of using the shrimp to feed your pets, what if the shrimp were the pets? And from that moment on, Harold Von Braunhut committed his life to selling brine shrimp to children as pets. Even though brine shrimp may appear normal, they're far from it. They can do this cool magic trick called cryptobiosis. Crypto meaning secret and biosis meaning life. To combat extreme drought, brine shrimp create eggs which can lay dormant for years, even decades. Their eggs are so small, to the naked human eye, they look like chia seeds. But if you just add water, boom, instant life. Even as an adult, it's hard to deny how cool that sounds. Harold thought if the kids could see them come to life, that alone would sell the product. The world's only instant live pets. Here's how he made it work. Pour regular tap water into your sea monkey microview aquarium, then add in packet number one, the water purifier. But before you can do anything else, you have to wait 24 hours until the purification process is complete, which feels like five years when you're a kid. But after a long day of waiting, you get to add in packet number two, which contains the eggs. And just like that, right before your very eyes, instant life. Right away, Harold knew sea monkeys would be an instant hit. But at the time, he had one problem. He needed a name for his product, and didn't have many ideas. So without putting too much thought into it, he went with the first thing that came to his mind. And even though their name doesn't make sense to a lot of people, Harold knew Sea Monkeys was the perfect name to capture the imagination of children. Harold's way of marketing Sea Monkeys was nothing short of genius. He found a way to bypass parents and get the ads right to kids. By marketing directly to children, he saved a ton of money and achieved insane results. At the time, every toy company wanted their products on TV, since that was the newest and hottest way to advertise products. But Harold chose to take a different route. Comic books. Not only was it a lot cheaper, but many companies actually disliked the use of comic book ads, which meant even more space for sea monkeys. Harold claims he bought over 3 million pages of comic book advertising a year. And it worked. Almost too well. For the visual portion of the advertisements, he hired Joe Orlando, an Italian-American illustrator who later became vice president of DC Comics. And those Joe Orlando graphics are so crucial to the Sea Monkey brand that they still use them to this day. But the wording within the ads, or ad copy, is all Herald. Sea Monkeys appear to do tricks and stunts at your command. Imagine a whole tumbling happy circus of live scampering sea monkeys. When I got sea monkeys as a kid, I'll admit, I was a little disappointed. It's hard not to be. But for a lot of kids, sea monkeys are almost a coming of age moment. 
when he realized the packaging is almost always better than the product, and that most companies care more about making money than providing a great product. And the deeper I look into the life of Harold Von Braunhut, it seems most of his products followed this same sort of method, basically misdirecting people on what they're buying, but doing it with the most absurd imagination of all time. If you search Harold Von Braunhut on Google, you won't find much. Most of Harold's life remains a mystery, but what we do know says a lot. This first one surprised me the most. He used to race motorcycles as the Green Hornet, and for work, managed the careers of entertainers. He worked with a man named Henry Lamoth, whose act consisted of diving 40 feet into a children's pool filled with only one foot of water. He also assisted Joseph Dunninger, one of the most famous mentalists of all time. So before inventing sea monkeys, Harold already had a background in illusions, and bending reality. But he was also a prolific inventor, and filed numerous patents before ever creating sea monkeys. Such as the x-ray specs, which promised you could see through clothes. He also invented crazy crabs and hair-raising monsters, which I think were just hermit crabs and some kind of plant. But his goofiest product by far was the invisible goldfish. If you sent away for it, they'd mail you an empty fishbowl, food, and no fish. And it lived up to its promise. You never saw the fish. Harold says they sold out. By the late 1960s, sea monkeys were a household name. Sales were up, and the future looked bright. But Harold had another problem. Sea monkeys as a product worked, just not that well. Customers reported maybe one or two sea monkeys surviving per batch. So, he began the process of strengthening sea monkeys to their highest capacity. Harold partnered with brine shrimp expert Anthony D'Agostino. Their goal was to create brine shrimp that could live dormant in their egg state for as long as possible, growing bigger and living longer than your standard brine shrimp. They called this new creation the Artemia NYOS. But as years passed, people began to figure out the secret behind what makes sea monkeys work. And it's all a trick, but not in the way you might think. So remember how you have to add in packet number one, the water purifier, then wait 24 hours? Well, it turns out packet number one also contains eggs. So waiting 24 hours is a form of misdirection to give the sea monkeys time to grow so you can actually see them. It's like a magic trick in the form of a product. Packet number two contains additional eggs, along with this sneaky blue dye that helps you view the sea monkeys better. So instant life is real, and the eggs actually do hatch upon hitting the water. It's just, you can't see them. So Harold created this artificial, scientific process to make cryptobiosis seem cool. With the art of illusion, he made cryptobiosis better than the real thing. But this is where things get weird, and darker than you ever could have imagined. In 1968, Harold patented something called the Kyoga Spring Whip. At first blush, it looks like any of his other goofy products. Something that's close to a whip, but is probably a toy or something. However, that's far from the case. The Kyoga Spring Whip was intended to be used as a weapon, in place of a real one. And the ads he took out for the Spring Whip were almost identical to his Sea Monkey adverts, with ad copy that read, You don't need a gun. Not only was the ad copy and layout similar, the coupon you cut out contained the same address. But at the same time, there's nothing bad about this fact. It's just a little odd. The guy who makes sea monkeys also creates makeshift weapons. And I wish that's all it was, because in perhaps the weirdest turn of events ever, Harold pledged the profits of the Kyoga Spring Whip to the Aryan Nations. According to the Anti-Defamation League, Harold was not only an active member of this group, but he was also known for his generosity. Someone who knew Harold quoted him saying, Hitler wasn't a bad guy, he just got bad press. But what troubles me the most is, how does a guy who invents some of the silliest products of all time adopt all these horrific ideas? And the further I look, the more confused I get. Because Harold Von Braunhut isn't his real name. It was a public persona, if anything. Harold was born Harold Nathan Braunhut. He grew up in New York and his family was Jewish. Which means Harold is Jewish too. So to put things into perspective, we have the inventor of sea monkeys, who we now know is Jewish, pledging the profits of his makeshift weapon to a hate group. If you're inclined not to believe me, I don't blame you. It all sounds insane. 
But after researching the life of Harold and his sea monkeys, I found that life is insane. It's cool, fun, magical, weird, and dark, just like Harold and his sea monkeys. Thank you for watching and check out this next video.